In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. On behalf of Monsignor Walter Rossi, who was wrecked with the Basilica, I welcome you this morning, this afternoon, for our Eucharistic liturgy, along with the group that has joined us from Fairfax, Virginia, from the Catholic School of St. Leo the Great, and all those who join us on our live stream broadcast. Jesus calls us to be a people of faith, even in the darkest moments, even when you and I think that we have very little of faith. It is God's love, his grace, that empowers us to persevere, even through the darkness, to know that Christ indeed is our light. He is the way, the truth, the life. Brothers and sisters, when our selfishness prevents us from being that truth, from living as that light, we now pause acknowledging that selfishness of sin as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory be to God on high. We praise Him. We bless Him. We worship Him. We love. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Habakkuk. How long, O Lord, I cry for help, but you do not listen. I cry out to you violence, but you do not intervene. Why do you let me see ruin? Why must I look at misery? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and clamorous discord. Then the Lord answered me and said, write down the vision clearly upon the tablets so that one can read it readily. For the vision still has its time, presses on to fulfillment, and will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not be late. The rash one has no integrity but the just one, because of his faith, shall live. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. Take as your norm the sound words that you heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard this rich trust with the help of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you have faith 
the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your servant who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here immediately and take your place at table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare something for me to eat, put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink? You may eat and drink when I am finished. It is grateful to that servant because he did what he was commanded to do. So should it be with you. When you have done all you have been commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. The Gospel of the Lord. Many of us would readily agree that any theoretical reflection or discussion on faith is much easier than the actual daily living out of it, especially when life becomes challenging and burdensome. Have you ever been in a similar moment of trepidation and despair as the prophet in today's first reading, finds himself and uttered his words of frustration as he pleads to the Almighty. I know I have many times. And each and every time those words make it easier for me to question my faith once more as I often identify with the prophet's pleading. How long, O Lord? I cry out for help, but you do not listen. You do not intervene. Why do you let me see ruin, misery, strife, and discord? How very real it is, my brothers and sisters, that temptation to easily give up on faith and to quit the trying task of Christian discipleship is. Especially when the cost becomes way too high for us to pay. How can we be expected to remain faithful in the face of life's many hardships and disappointments and setbacks that test our fortitude and our patience. Jesus revealed to us, as he did to his disciples, the answer to that urgent prayerful request, increase our faith, O Lord. The scriptures and prayers this Sunday call each of us especially those who may be struggling with doubts about their faith and trust in God, to remember the words of the prophet, of St. Paul and Jesus in today's readings. Can we truly believe that the just one, because of his faith, shall live? Can we trust in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus with the help of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us? Can we ultimately believe that if you have the faith the size of the tiniest seed, you could do what would seem to us and to the world impossible 
cooperating with the grace that God bestows on those who place their trust in him alone. As Jesus knew what his disciples needed then, he knows what you and I, his followers now, need. God's infinite love encourages us, empowers us to draw on the many blessings that he pours out upon us, the greatest being the gift of faith. However weak, however unequipped and unworthy you and I may think we are to accomplish the daunting task of unwrapping the precious mystery of that gift. His ever abiding and powerful love will reveal to us the truth, the hidden dimension of mystery, of our never ending life in the Lord will be given us. He will increase our faith, calling us not to harden our hearts, but to remain ever faithful, ever authentic in following Christ to the end, beyond death to the reward of everlasting life, mysteriously starting here and now. Jesus' response to the apostles and to our own desire for an increase of faith in the light of his call to discipleship underscores the quality rather than the quantity of our faith. In Christ, you and I come to realize that faith is relational, a way of expressing our true God-given blessedness in our behavior to the other. The way that God conforms us to his Son, Jesus Christ. We live, therefore, not only by faith as an inner attitude, but also by faithfulness, by its outward expression. As the faithful of the church, we are called to look into the signs of the times by the light of faith. As you and I devote ourselves to the service of the gospel. This week and always, may our witness to what we believe be inspired by the wisdom of the author of the letter to the Hebrews who writes, faith is the realization of what is hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. My brothers and sisters, like the apostles, let us as Christ's followers today, now and always, entreat our God. O oh Lord, increase our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered as one family in faith, let us now voice our needs to God in prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops, that their witness to the gospel will renew the faith of the people of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That on this Respect Life Sunday, a greater awareness for the sanctity of all human life will grow ever deeper in the hearts of people and nations throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in abusive relationships, that they may experience God's love and find the courage and support to seek help and free themselves from domestic violence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been displaced from their homes and for all who have lost their lives due to natural disasters, especially those affected by hurricanes Fiona and Ian, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life, that many will answer God's call with generous hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all the personal intentions that we bring to this Mass, as well as those needs entrusted to the shrine by our benefactors and pilgrims, let us pray to the Lord. That our family and friends who have died may now know the fullness of peace and joy in God's kingdom forever, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we offer in faith. May your unconditional love help us to bring your gift to life in all that we say and do. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. we invite you to use the envelopes provided in the pews or visit the National Shrine online as a means of sharing in our ministry at the Basilica of the National Shrine. Thank you for your continued support and generosity.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accepts our sacrifice and praise for it. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us, and he has called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O Lord, who love the human race, who always walks with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer to you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor upon the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and his assistant bishops, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times, by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Today's second collection is to aid humanitarian efforts for those affected in recent months from natural disasters, such as Hurricanes Fiona and Ian. This emergency collection will be used to support the rebuilding efforts in the areas affected by natural disasters. Thank you for your continued support of this urgent need.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you all for joining us and being together and celebrating, especially Father Brian, a Capuchin friar who comes from right up the block from us for being here. We persevere, my brothers and sisters, in faith, but we are not alone. It is the gift of God's love that accompanies us to put into action what we believe. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.